Nomad Capitalist as a business hires people all around the world these days on a number of different continents, but one of the places that we're most well known for is Eastern Europe. I'm going to remind you why we've hired there, and I'm also going to share with you five countries where we've had a tough time. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. This is Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally go where you're treated best, more at nomadcapitalist.com. And as a lifelong entrepreneur, I've always believed in the power of looking internationally to find the best talent, uh, to get the best advantages for your business. And so if your business is starting out, if you're a new entrepreneur, hiring overseas allows you to get you know, lower priced talent. Uh, it allows you to get higher quality talent at a reasonable price where you're not paying people half a million dollars in some cases, but you're still paying them very, very good wages by any country's standards. Uh, it allows you to go places where perhaps the attitudes are better. It allows you to go places where uh, people are more willing to work. There's any number of different you know, reasons why you might want to consider hiring overseas. I know this is a, it's a sensitive topic, and none of the countries that I'm going to mention today that we've personally had difficulties recruiting in, I'm not saying that you shouldn't consider those or that they're bad people. I'm just going to share my own experience with you for what it's worth. You're happy to leave a comment, and I'm sure people will. Uh, why did we start in Eastern Europe? People often ask me this. In, in many ways, it was happenstance. If you go back to our business many years ago, uh, when we were just starting out and we had kind of a different iteration of the business, we had people from places like Germany, from Austria, from Poland, uh, kind of this, you know, Central and Western European approach. Um, and, you know, the idea was, okay, well, let's expand our horizons within Europe. Let's hire support staff and, you know, where can we go? And we, we kind of placed ads back then it was on social media uh, recruiting people. And uh, I remember I had been in Romania and I talked to some people there and they would brag like, I make $1,000 a month. I make $1,200 a month. This is going back six or seven years ago. So wages have definitely gone up. But these are people who, who sounded like they could be Americans. Uh, I then would go and talk to people who didn't quite sound like Americans, but who had very good English, who said, oh, 1200 no one's making that. Um, and so the idea, more so than the price, was that you could find people who were perhaps a bit more worldly. Obviously, we're a worldly business. We're perhaps a bit more worldly. Uh, at the time, um, and still, I suppose, I was spending a lot of my time in Asia, and so the time zone was better. Uh, if you live in Asia, you know that uh, if you're working with the Western world, especially North America, you're staying up until 1 or 2 a.m. a lot. That's why a lot of people I talk to these days don't want to move to Asia because they don't want that time zone issue. But if you are living in Asia and you've got a team in Eastern Europe, it seemed much more palatable. And so based on my great experiences in Romania and some other countries around there, we started putting ads all around. And uh, Romania actually never performed that well, more on that in a moment. What always stood out was Serbia. Serbia, this country that only has uh, several million people, we continued to get people who, who wanted to work for us. Um, and they were you know, very flexible. Uh, we tried other countries. We, we've had people you know, occasionally from Montenegro and elsewhere. And now our team has expanded around the entire region. We have people in different places. Um, but. Uh, Serbia was the one that always stood out. It was not that I intended to go to Serbia, but my idea was, based on my experiences in Eastern Europe, uh, you had people who were really intelligent people who, back when our company was much smaller, we could afford to, you know, to take on more of them um, without you know, putting a, a burden on ourselves. You could afford just to take a chance on people um, at, at a much lower price and then, and then raise them up as, as they you know, went along. That was the idea, and I think that uh, nothing wrong with hiring in Asia. I think a lot of people who are coming from the West probably have more in common culturally. Not to say that, that Eastern Europe is the exact same as the United States. There's things that are much better about it. And there's probably a few things that aren't as, as good about it. But you know, I think for most people, it's probably easier to adapt to than going down to, um, to Latin America or to Asia. Uh, we've had great people from Venezuela, great people from the Philippines, great people from all over the place. Uh, but Eastern Europe has been consistently good. But there are a couple of countries where we've had difficulty. One that it seems a lot of other people have success with is Ukraine. I have a number of Ukrainian friends who've said, yeah, you know, a lot of people are going there. And uh, as such, uh, it's become rather expensive. Um, and so, again, if you're just starting out or just if you, if you want to test things out, sometimes we'll say, you know what, we're going we're gonna to start a role and we're not really sure where it's going to go. So let's find someone who's flexible. And we found in Ukraine, definitely you've got a lot of good talent in Ukraine, um, that you know, you'll go on Ukrainian job websites and you'll find people who either don't speak great English or who are just kind of difficult to, to nail down. We have had people on the team from Ukraine and they've been good, uh, but it just seems like it was harder to scale for some reason. 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, honestly. Uh, but as I said, some of my Ukrainian friends said, well, you know, it's getting more difficult. People just, you know, uh, it is harder to nail down. One thing that I've noticed about Ukraine, whenever you go on, let's say, LinkedIn and you post a, a job ad in Ukraine, people know Ukraine is the destination where people go for outsourcing. And so you'll put an ad in Ukraine. You won't get that many Ukrainians, but you'll get lots of people from other places. Uh, you'll get, you know, Tunisians or Egyptians or Pakistanis uh, who realize, hey, I guess if I apply for this job in Ukraine, maybe they'll hire me on. Uh, because they're looking for you know, remote workers in Ukraine. It's well known for that. It's obviously a huge country by the standards of most European countries. Uh, and so a lot of folks that aren't from Ukraine apply, but not that many Ukrainians. Uh, next door, one country, even though I've spent a, a decent amount of time there, that's always been difficult is Moldova. Uh, again, I don't know why, other than it's a very small country. Um, and I've known people from Moldova, and it just... I'm not exactly sure why it's difficult, uh, but we've really never gotten much reply to job ads. Certainly you've got you know, different, different languages spoken in Moldova, but when I go there, you find enough young people who do speak English. There's some relatively smart people, uh, some very smart people, um, but just never really got the action there. And that kind of saddened me because I, I, I always enjoy uh, popping into Moldova, uh, but, but it had some difficulty. Uh, another country, much bigger country, that we've also had difficulty with is in Russia. Now, I think Russia is a great place, and if you're you know, marketing to that part of the world, you've got a great work ethic in many parts of Russia, uh, if you find the right people. You've got you know, a truly cosmopolitan city in Moscow. It's 24-7, um, and so there are people who are used to working uh, at all different hours. There are people who are used to working pretty hard. And I think Russia is overlooked in many ways. The challenge is not a lot of English is spoken. And so you've really got to adapt to the Russian culture. So if you just think you're going to go on LinkedIn, for example, they have much, very much their own ecosystem. In a sense, even a country like a Georgia, for example, um, they have Georgian staffing websites. Um, but people don't really use as many of the other websites. People use Facebook a lot more. I think that is somewhat changing. But, you know, Russia has their own ecosystem, so you've got to adapt to that. And if you're just coming from the West, it may be a bit more difficult. Obviously, it's, you know, it's difficult enough if you're going to Serbia to find InfoStud, for example, uh, but that's more easily done. Russia, I think, requires a greater adaptation. And if you need people with fluent English, they do exist. I've talked to some. Um, and I think Russia is great. I think it's much more difficult to find that talent. If you're hiring for you know, very high level stuff, you will find Russians in lots of places around the world, both in Russia and in Dubai, for example, um, other parts of Europe. Um, and so if you want to hire Russians who are really high level, you know, the most that I've found uh, are indeed in Dubai. Belarus next door, difficult for many of the same reasons. Um, I think Belarus, again, known some Belarusians, nice people, it's been difficult. Lastly, uh, going back to where it all started, uh, not where the idea started, but where the, the thought of Eastern Europe as the place was Romania. Romania, um, I think, is very interesting. Now, Romania certainly is part of the EU, and so you know, the EU brings with it a certain level of nonsense. One of the things that I believe in is you can go into some of these countries and you can be a good employer. You know, one thing I was talking to a few of my friends from Georgia recently, they said, people here don't always want to work for Georgian employers. Now, I think that perhaps employers and, and, and leaders adapt to cultures, but you know, I can tell you, some of these Georgian companies, some of these Eastern European companies, you work there, uh, you know, it's pretty strict. There are some negatives of working there that drive people to want to work for an international company in some of these countries. And so if you can be international and you can truly respect your employees and offer them a path to growth and offer them competitive salaries and other, other things, you want to understand the culture to make sure you're doing it properly. Uh, but you can really offer that competitively. I think the EU probably offers a bit less of that. Um, but Romania, you know, we really got uh, some pushback last time we, we were, uh, were there. And it wasn't even over money um, because, you know, we're always flexible to being competitive on price. And we do offer a path to growth pretty quickly. Um, but one of the things that we, it seems that Romania, we got the most pushback on when we said, hey, there's a, there's a way to grow. Now, if you talk to people who have been with me for a couple of years, uh, there's a path to grow. I mean, quite frankly, uh, sometimes I wonder, if, like, maybe, maybe, I, maybe the, 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 the ascent was too steep for some of these people. But, you know, I'm happy to do it. Uh, one of the things we got pushback on was, this is something we hear from everybody. This is nonsense. You know, there's not really a way to grow. This is just your scheme. One thing you do see in some of these countries, probably a lot of places around the world, but I've seen in Eastern Europe, is that they're used to people come, you know, bringing people in for these, um, like a three-month trial where you don't pay them very much. 
maybe you pay them the official minimum wage and a couple bucks under the table, which I don't really like. Um, but companies will kind of bring people in for this three month churn. Now for me, I'm trying to run a, a, a big business. Uh, I'm not looking to be churning people every three months. And so it's sometimes hard to convince certain people like that's not what I want to do. Um, and so Romania, it seems, listen, uh, I like going to Romania. I haven't been there in a while, but I really like, I really liked my time there and I really wanted to do stuff there. Uh, it seems like it's been more challenging than when I was there in 2015. If you uh, do hire there, I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section. Do leave something behind. These are countries, again, this is not me trying to say these places are bad or the people are bad or, you know, I've got any grievance. I'm simply saying here are, I think some of the roadblocks that we've experienced. Some of them are clear, some of them are less clear. Um, and, you know, you can take it for what it's worth. We have had success in the Balkans. We've had success, I think we targeted in Asia, like Indonesia is an interesting place. I've mentioned um, Venezuela, you know, parts of Colombia. Um, there's lots of places that have, and have good potential. These are some that we've had some trouble with, but overall I think the region is very interesting for employers. Don't stop now. We've got well over a thousand more videos here on YouTube for you to watch and learn how to go where you're treated best. And if you want to work with Nomad Capitalist personally, go to nomadcapitalist.com apply, learn about our unique tried and true process, garnered over years of experience, and learn how you can become our client.